Hello and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to go through energy transfer and productivity. If you are new here then just click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So energy transfer, this bit is quite similar to GCSE because it does link to energy being transferred through a food web which is something you covered at GCSE. And in any ecosystem you should be familiar with the concept that plants are the producers so therefore they're always going to be at the start of a food chain and they're core producers because they produce their own carbohydrates or organic matter and they do this using carbon dioxide in the atmosphere um, and water so between each trophic level and that is the name for each stage in a food chain a lot of energy is lost and again, that is something you did cover at GCSE. And that energy could be lost due to respiration. So loss of energy is lost as heat energy in respiration. Also excretion though. So in the feces, the urine and exhaling in carbon dioxide. And whatever is remaining, the energy that is remaining is available to form biomass. And that's the key concept here, biomass because that is what is available to then be passed on to the next trophic level. And the amount of biomass remaining in an organism can be measured in terms of the mass of carbon or the dry mass of tissue per given area. So sometimes you might get questions where they tell you um, how could you work out the biomass of a plant. So you'd need to remove all of the water to make sure it was just the dry mass and in that way you know you've got the mass of the carbon and we do it per given area just so it's a fair comparison between different sized organisms so NPP and GPP these will be two new terms compared um, from GCSE and this is linking to how you can quantify how productive an ecosystem is and the productivity of an ecosystem depends on how favourable the abiotic factors and biotic factors are. So if there's plenty of water, there's a high light intensity, um, it's nice and warm, there's lots of green plants available. All of these abiotic and then the green plants, biotic factors, will help to increase the rates of photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is how we get carbohydrates and therefore carbon into the food web at the start. So the more photosynthesis occurring in our producers, the more carbon and therefore the more biomass entering the food chain. So that is what we mean by productivity. And we can quantify or measure this using GPP and MPP. So let's have a look at what these two terms mean. GPP is gross primary productivity or production. And this is the chemical energy store in plant biomass. And it's given per area or per volume. So again, it is a fair comparison um, between different ecosystems. So what we actually mean by this is it's the total energy resulting from photosynthesis. So GPP is the total energy entering your food chain as a result of photosynthesis. Now in comparison, NPP is the GPP, but it takes into account the energy lost in respiration. So it's the total amount of energy from photosynthesis minus the energy that will be lost in respiration. So what that means is the net primary productivity or production, that is the chemical energy that will therefore be left over to create new biomass in the plant. So that is really what we're interested in, how much NPP is there, because that is the amount of energy that can then be used to create biomass. And the biomass is what can be passed on to the next trophic level in a food web. So I've got two examples here. We've got the rainforest, we've got a desert, 
ecosystem. And the top one, the rainforest, because we have plenty of water, lots of green plants, they both have lots of light availability, um, but the top one will have far more photosynthesis. So it'll have a much, much higher GPP. It'll therefore have a higher NPP. So a rainforest ecosystem will be far more productive compared to a desert. So another calculation that you could be asked to use is um, one to work out the net production of consumers this time instead of plants. And it might seem quite a straightforward formula, but they've thrown it onto the new spec now. So if you were to use it or even state it in an exam question, it could be worth a mark. So what this is looking at is taking into account the amount of energy entering and exiting the consumer and therefore looking at how much energy is left over that can be converted into new biomass or new cells in the animal. So the I part of the formula is the energy ingested in food. So that'll be our chemical energy from food. You then have to look at though how much energy is lost in respiration and how much energy is lost in feces and urine. And this wasn't in the previous formula because plants do not produce feces and urine. So that's why there's an extra component to this formula. So N, which is the net production of consumers, is whatever you have left. When you look at what goes in minus what comes out. So the last thing is these rates of productivity. If you were going to compare how productive two different ecosystems are, there's actually three components to the units you would use um, in your calculation. And quite often you could be asked for two marks to state appropriate units, or you could be asked to justify all the components of the units. So this is actually quite important for this topic. So we have kilojoules. Now I've used here per hectare, but that could be per meter squared. Um, and we've got per year. So kilojoules is the unit for energy. So rates of productivity, we said we're looking at how much energy is entering the food chain. So that's why kilojoules is in the um, units because it's a unit for energy. But we've also got per hectare there, and that is an area. So we have to do per unit of area that you are studying. And this is to standardize your results because it's not going to be a fair comparison if you're looking at the rate of productivity in a very small field compared to an entire rainforest. So we have to do this divided by the area that you're studying or per unit area. So it's standardizing the results and therefore we have a fair comparison. Similar idea here, why we do it per year. And that is, again, so it's a fair comparison, but this time it's taking into account the fact that throughout the year, the productivity will vary because the temperature varies, the rainfall varies, as does the light intensity. So we always take measurements over the entire year and then it's per year and therefore it's a fair comparison. So that is it for productivity and energy transfer. I hope you found it helpful.